Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today we're talking about power adapters, voltages, plugs and always having the right adapter for your device. You find a device in a box and you think, oh there it is, I've been looking for that but I can't find the power adapter. <sighs> Might as well chuck it. But it's a pity because it's really handy. I wonder if there's a solution. Now, it's worth noting we're talking about low voltage stuff here. If it's a 240 volt item, or 110 in other parts of the world, it'll either have the cable wired in, or be one of pretty much three different plugs. The standard PC plug that looks like this, and then this one for smaller devices, known as the figure eight plug, and this one, which is the Mickey Mouse plug, for obvious reasons. These are all available at just about any electronics store, or find your local computer shop, or even technician that might work in a large company, school or university. They've usually got boxes of them lying around. In this case, we're talking about low voltage devices. And you might have 10, a dozen or more of these around your house with plugs on them that look like this, all scattered around doing different things or charging different devices. It's getting better because these days, lots more things are powered or charged via USB. And that's great because it's universal. But there are still lots of things that need a power adapter and it's frustrating when you can't find the right one. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Trying random adapters is generally not a good idea. You might damage something. It's true. You can. I have. So what can you do? Well, if you can work out what you need, then you can go online or to a local electronics store and buy it. You may even already have it. But how do you know which is the right one? Well, there's four important things to look for. Voltage. Most devices these days run off 5 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt, or more. Laptops tend to run 19 to 22 volts and are a bit specialized. Plugs. Most plugs these days are standardized on this fella, which is really handy. The outside diameter is 5.5 millimeters and the inside diameter is 2.5 millimeters. But there are others, lots of others especially in devices that are really small. If you have a set of calipers like these, you can actually measure the size. Well, at least the outside diameter. Sometimes the inside diameter is a bit trickier and you might have to guess. It's worth noting that the plug will be a little bit smaller than whatever you measure the outside diameter of the socket to be. Polarity. Almost everything has the positive voltage on the tip or the inside of the barrel with the ground on the outside of the barrel. But every now and again, you find a device that switches them around. I found a brother label printer the other day that I wanted a power supply for, and it was ground tipped, which is really annoying. And I had to cut the cable and switch it round to make it work. The last thing you need to know, maybe, is power. It can be a bit of an unknown, but it can also be less crucial to get it exactly right. Some things draw very little power, only a few hundred milliamps. Others may draw up to 1, 2 or even 3 amps. If it has a motor in it like this spinning hard drive in a backup drive, it's likely to be 2 amp or more. If it's just powering some LEDs, it's likely to be much less. Great. Four things. But how do I find those four things? Well, it's usually on the specifications page of the manual. But if you've lost the power adapter, you've probably lost the manual as well. You might be able to look it up online and find it there but there's usually an easier way. Most devices have it written on the bottom or the back, either right next to the power socket itself or on a label with the model number and other bits and pieces of info. You just have to learn how to read them. This one isn't very helpful. It just says DC 12 volt. Okay, that's one piece of information. The socket itself measures at 4.25 millimeters. And beside it is this little icon, which tells you that it is in fact a standard positive tip as well. So now we have three things, voltage, plug, and polarity. Here is the actual plug. It measures at four millimeters. And you can see that the output is 12 volts at two amp, and it has a positive tip. It has a spinning hard drive, so that's not surprising. And we know it's a match. This network switch shows 12 volt and positive tip next to the plug. And here is the adapter for it. I pretty much never throw out an adapter, and lots of people give them to me as well. 
This is the tub of adapters that I've collected in the last 12 to 18 months. Minus a few that I've actually used. People just keep giving them to me. I have lots more. I actually sort them into different tubs. Less than 5 volt, 5 volt, 6 to 9 volt, 12 volt, more than 12 volt, and laptop. When I, or someone else, needs an adapter, I can usually find something. Worst case, if I find the right voltage, and roughly the right power, I might be able to cut a plug off another cable and join them together. Checking the polarity, of course. I like the idea of these little guys that have the solder and heat shrink in one, which you can buy on Amazon up here. You just push the ends of the wire in so that they meet at the silver solder bit, and then heat it up with a heat gun until it all melts and holds them together. Soldered and heat shrinked in one. As an example, the other day I was given an electric music keyboard and it can run off six AA batteries or there was a socket for a power cord, but there was no power adapter. Before handing it on to the next owner, I scavenged in the tub and found this nine volt power adapter with a standard plug. The first one I tried was only 210 milliamps and it just wasn't enough to make it work. The second one was a thousand milliamp or one amp and it worked perfectly. It can go to its new owner and not need a constant stream of batteries. Yay! Question of the day. Now that you know how to find the right adapter for the right device, will you start a collection of power adapters? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some older episodes you may not have seen before, here and here. And you can subscribe to our channel by clicking down here, or our mailing list by clicking up here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.